Hello everyone, my name is Amir Khan and I am one of the guys behind the Octane Academy with few others and today we are going to start a new um, new playlist, uh, let's say, where we are going to have user sessions for ALM Octane and interview different users and see their view how they are experiencing um, the transformation from traditional uh, ALM to the modern ALM Octane platform and um, what challenges they face as well as how they have addressed those challenges and how they have drive the whole migration uh, part as well as um, the integration to the continuous integration systems such as Jenkins and so on and um, also how the user adoption works because this is also something moving towards a new tool uh, requires also to adapt uh, approaches as well as understanding the tool capability so how was this transaction for the different users and um, today we have uh, Mark Anlika with us he is the Mr. Doctor Synchronizer himself um, very known in Switzerland as well as in the DAC community so he has been contributing to the Swiss testing community quite often as well as to the Embrace uh, DevOps community in Switzerland and uh, today I'm very happy to have him here and hear about what were his experiences um, when it came to this transformation with ALM Octane and how they managed his organization with his company, how they have drive the whole uh, migration, the user adoption. So a new tool is one question, but the other one is like, you know, how user have transformed within their organization. So I'm very happy to have Mark here today with me and um, listen to what he has to say. So finally, we have him with us, uh, Mark Anlicker, also Dr. Synchronizer. Thanks for being with us, uh, Mark, and really super excited to have you on uh, this user session. It's the very first user sessions, by the way. And um, listen to you and your experience, what you have uh, done so far with ALM Octane. So first of all, warm welcome uh, and um, happy to have you in this session. Yes, hi, my name is Mark and I'm working for Swisscom, the coolest DevOps company in Switzerland. Swisscom is the most important telecommunication provider in Switzerland, but also an important provider of IT services. Cool, so you, you are working for Swisscom. How long have you been with the company? Um, 17 and a half year. Wow, that's uh, quite a long time. So you are... In and out Swisscom, yeah. So you, yeah. But I'm um, thirty. I have a thirty years experience in IT. i uh, um, at all. So I'm I was developer. I was application um, specialist. All kind of things you can be in uh, in IT. Ah, oh, very nice. So this is really so you have seen uh, the whole uh, spectrum of application yeah. lifecycle management. Um, so tell us uh, something about your current role. What are you doing at uh, Swisscom? Well, I and the team I'm working in is responsible for the um, um, for running ALM, Octane, um, Load Runner Enterprise, Performance Center, and all kind of uh, of other tools in this microfocus portfolio. Okay, so but you are also taking some other tools. So you are taking care about uh, tools within Swisscom, tools which are maybe for the quality management. Yeah, it is within Swisscom, but we are also running um, ALM for other customers. Oh, so okay. not Swisscom customers. So it's a service provider. Uh, yes. Okay. So very nice. So uh, you uh, you know you have been a really um, a expert on ALMQC, and that's also why I'm so excited uh, to have your feedback. Um, you have been intensively working with ALMQC, setting up the synchronization, but also you know you were always one of the expert when it came to workflow scripting and also the understanding of the QC modules, test plan, test lab defects. Um, mm -hmm. So now you have doing, you are in between of the journey to ALM Octane. So what are the differences uh, when you look on both sides and uh, where would you say uh, things has been improved? 
Well, there are some major differences, I would say. Yes, the the most important um, difference, in my opinion, is that it is that Octane is fully supporting the DevOps and Agile processes. Mm -hmm. So um, in ALM, we can run um, waterfall projects, but in Octane, we can also run waterfall projects, of course, but the full Agile and DevOps processes are supported. And that is, I would say, the, the most important advantage of of course, we have um, differences, but the differences between ALM and Octane are mainly in the administration or customization of uh, workspace and um, don't really affect a user. Um, if, a user if a user is experienced to work with defects in ALM, he can immediately continue to work with these defects um, in Octane. It is not really a big difference. Okay, so this is a very interesting point, and I wanted to come to this later, but let's tackle it now. So um, people who have been using ALMQC in the past, um, so you say the adoption towards Octane, how is it for the users? Is it uh, Do they need to do a separate, you know, a complete uh, training for two, three weeks, or how is the adoption, or how have you driven the adoption so far? I can only speak for the users I know in Switzerland, uh, or in Swisscom, sorry, and um, I re they really don't need a special training. They mm -hmm. just um, move to from ALM to Octane, and then continue work with, with, uh, with Octane, without further training. And that was really an ex amazing experience for for myself because I thought, well, they will ask a lot, a lot, a lot of questions, but they don't ask any questions. They just continue to work. I had um, exchanges with other, um, well, administrations of Octane, and they told me, well, we organized a huge training for all the users, but for us it was not needed. They just continued to work, and that was it. Was really it was really great to see that. This is this is a great feedback, by the way, and um, you know this is also what I have been experiencing uh, when talking to other customers that uh, Octane is intuitive, and it's uh, somehow you know self-explaining. So when you have worked in the context of testing or in context of quality management or application delivery, it seems like you are intuitively understanding how it works. Yes, I think and the, the tool is, is um, integrated. All the parts of the tool are integrated and that makes it easy to work with, with the tool, I think. And you have the connections between a defect, the test, the uh, user story, and so on. That is all integrated and all linked one to another um, item. And that is a really great advantage. Yeah, so the whole traceability, you say, is um, completely... And it's very similar to QC because QC's strength was also, you know, having the whole traceability covered. And uh, I think this is embedded in Octane as well. Yes. Even when you are migrating from ALM to um, Octane, the whole traceability of these um, requirements, when we are talking to requirements, for instance, mm -hmm. because we have their traceability metrics, the, this traceability is also migrated. Mm -hmm. But of course, we have additional item types, um, epics, features, uh, user stories and tasks, and they help us to work in a agile way. Mm -hmm. So this is um, that is the big difference. Yeah, definitely. So have you adapted it, or because I know you have been 
doing the migration, right? So you have migrated QC projects, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have uh, actively migrated QC projects to Octane project. Can you explain how how have you planned the whole migration as well? Have you involved the uh, users? Uh, how were the different stages of the migration? Can you elaborate on this? Well, we have not yet migrated all the ALM projects. Mm -hmm. We are um, in the middle of the migration, I yeah. would say. What we first did is we asked, we, we had, um, when we started, we had about uh, 170 ALM projects. Wow. And um, of course, um, some of them um, are not, no, are no longer used. So it is old stuff. It is um, stuff no longer um, in in use. And some of the projects um, we could just delete, just erase, um, throw away. Have the data um, in a backup. So we um, kept some project in a in a um, backup file, or we in for some projects, we um, exported the data to Excel list because the user wanted to have Excel list. I don't know what he will do with uh, thousands of tests, but that's not my problem. Mm -hmm. So it's more like archiving, yeah? So you have archived a few yes, of the... Yes. Yeah. And, and other users um, wanted to have, well, migrated all the data. So all is is possible if you are familiar with the migrated tool. <laughs> Tell us something. You know, this is I think this is a very interesting topic, and um, I don't know who to ask better than you. Yeah. So you you have always been technical. So tell us something about the migration tool. I know this was not discussed before, but tell us something about the migration tool and how was your experience when you started with it and how do you feel now with it? Yes, the my, uh, I have to say um, it has um, several times enhanced since I began to work with the migrator tool. And um, because we had certain um, needs that have not have been not uh, um, covered when we began, but now, um, well, most of them I would say are now covered. Most of these needs. Um, so um, yes, it, it it was completely new for me to work with this tool, and it was not um, all the times um, very easy. Um, and of course, you. What you need to know is a, a good, a really good understanding of the ALM and what will migrate the tool do with your ALM data. Because um, let's have a look to the um, comments of the of the defects. I know this is one um, big topic of of the migration. When and I know a lot of customers have been. I'm customizing exactly. or have customized um, the, the defect um, field. For instance, they changed the, um, the sequence of the commands or they shortened the line of the two commands and so on and but so you on. But in QC, right? In QC. Yep. And so when we want um, to do, when we want to do the migration, we need to we need to adapt all these um, well changes in a way that the migrated tool can now understand what is in ALM. If there is no separation line between two commands, mm -hmm. the migrated tool knows well that is one command for me. He doesn't separate them, mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. probably have to to introduce. Uh, a new separation line, or if the separation line is shortened, you have to enlarge this, se this separation line to the normal length. Mm. And all mm. kinds of, of things like that, you really need a, a good feeling of, of the ALM project. So 
So it is really important and I'm really experienced in, in, in these things. And it is really important that you um, uh, know what is in the ALM project. Mm -hmm. So that's a very uh, nice and uh, deep technical feedback. So thank you for that. Yeah, and really, so technical. <laughs> yeah, so it was uh, really, that's exactly what I expected. But now when you look at the uh, migration tool, what do you think? So is it covering your needs? Um, have this been improved uh, so far? Yes, it has been improved and, um, improved and I think it, it, it's, it covers our needs actually in, in, at the moment, yes. Okay. So thanks for that feedback. Um, I have, you know, you, you mentioned, and I will keep this more now, you know, uh, spontaneous. Um, from the question perspective, you have been customizing the uh, uh, QC side quite heavily. You had the workflow scripts. Uh, you, yes. you know, you had uh, added additional fields. And I know you have added a lot of additional fields. Um, so how do you see at the customization when you look at Octane? You have... You know, in QC, it was like the customization was executed on the client side, while as in Octane, I think it's executed on the server side. So what is uh, the difference from your perspective? And um, do you think you can cover all the things you have uh, implemented in QC workflow with Octane? I hope at least. <laughs> well, um, some of the... Some of the customiza customization is easier. Uh, let's say the creation of forms was um, sometimes not very intuitive in, in ALM and this um, tool or this visit that was provided in, in, um, in ALM was really, oh, I know, I didn't like it. <laughs> the visit, the script generator, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that was also my beginning, beginning of scripting in ALM, of course. With the script but, generator. Um, yes, that of course. It was a spaghetti code. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> but uh, I enhanced it uh, in all the projects. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <was> working. <laughs> but I also created um, forms in ALM for all the... Um, for all the, the item types, not only for the defects, of course. Mm -hmm. And it is quite easy to, to do, yeah, with some technical understanding, of course. <laughs> yeah. um, but you can do almost everything in ALM. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not yet, I don't know yet um, how exactly I can, um, well adapt all the reportings we have in ALM to Octane. So we are not finished with the migration. Mm -hmm. we, we have a lot to do and a lot of the work is migrate the, the customization, migrate the, um, well, there are no longer scripts as they have been in ALM, but they are probably external actions or um, are web hooks and so on. So it is really, you have to, to change your thinking. You have to change your manner to work when you are an AL, when you have been an ALM administrator and are now an Octane administrator. That is really a difference. Yes. But you know, um, uh, I don't want to, I'm an old man, I know, but I don't want to work um, 10 years longer as I worked um, until now. I, I want to to adapt new things and I want to, to help people test or um, having their um, uh, application life cycle easier. Yeah. And that is my aim. I want to 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 cover with the with the tool with Octane. Yeah, so that's a, a very nice feedback, um, Mark. But also, you know, um, you cannot continue to work in the same manner. Um, we have a very nice 
O data interface as well as the I, I think it's one of the fastest interfaces uh, with REST API. Have you explored this a bit as well as the business rules? I well, um, for the business rules, I can say I'm fully familiar with them. Mm -hmm. So I make business rules for um, let's say um, mandatory fields. Of course, that is one of the. Uh, I can I, I can only do it with with the with rules or I have created the rules to to really hide defects for for one or the other group of users and so on. So data hiding in the def on of the defects is also um I, I'm I'm really familiar with this and that is one um very important point for our customers. So for internal users and customers external customers so and that is is really important that we can do it we can hide um some defects for some user groups that is really very very important mm -hmm. for um and that is for this um these rules and what was the other point you mentioned um rest api and o data Yes, I began to work with REST API, but I'm, well, I'm not as far as I wanted to be at this moment. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Honest feedback. And uh, OData, have you looked into this? Because OData, you know, it um, can be very helpful. Yes, um, we have some problem. We can see OData, but we cannot make it in, in Excel. We can only um, um, see the data in the browser, so th there is a problem we have not yet solved. But okay. we are on the way. Okay. We are on the way to, to to solve all these problems. I'm I'm convinced that we can solve them. <laughs> Definitely, me too. So now you know. Um, also looking at the time, um, when you look at ALM Octane. Yeah, so what would you describe or how would you describe the learning curve? Because also for you as a user, how I, I think you have to learn a few things like business rules and so on, especially from the administration part, but also from the project work, like you are working in a workspace. Uh, how is the learning curve when you work with Octane? I would say working in a workspace or working in an ALM project is not a really a big difference. Mm -hmm. I'm I think you can do it mm, yes, you you learn it really fast and that is not um, really not difficult to learn. The the big difference and um well that is um not so easy probably is for the administrator for customizing the work uh, um, the workspace the, the space if you have a shared space you have to understand this um, what is a shared space what is a, um, a workspace and you can um, set make settings on the site on on the site level on the workspace level on the space uh, space level, so that is really um, you have to understand the the hierarchy hier hierarchy of of your system. So mm -hmm. that is probably um, yes uh, makes the difference. And the administrator really has um, probably has a lot to to learn. But the user, the the project user. I think it is not really. Um, there are not a lot of things he have to learn. Of course, if he himself want to use um, um, REST APIs and so on, that is a difference. If he wants to use um, additional tools like um, Load Runner, uh, UFT, and so on, they, the integration of these tools to Octane is um, quite different from the integration exactly. in ALM. So that he has also to to adapt, of course. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So by the way, the sun is shining. It's uh, quite nice weather. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, very nice. You know, one last question I have for you, uh, Mark, and uh, really thanks for being so honest here and uh, straight to the point. 
Uh, what is your favorite feature when you look at ALM Octane? What is your favorite feature if you have to select only one? Only one. Well, uh, that would be a, a, a several, of course, but <laughs> the, the most important for me is the Kanban board. That is really missing in ALM and in Octane. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of possibilities with the Kanban board, and, and I really, I really love it. So, do you uh, use it uh, internally? Yes, of course. Yes. We are using it really in, in our daily work. As the Octane administrators, we are working in a, in a DevOps mode and we really use this Kanban board, but also other users are, um, are using the, the Kanban board. I think that is really important. So very nice. Thanks a lot for this feedback and also thank you for um, being with us. Um, so. Mark, what is the next step at, you, uh, at your side? When you look now into ALM Octane, what are the next steps coming for you in the next few months and weeks? Well, of course, we want to finish uh, the migration. We have not yet finished, I told you. And of course, I have a lot to learn with, or a lot to, not to learn, but to do. And with these REST APIs, we want to automate a lot of things. Um, also for us, um, we had in ALM, we had some um, very nice scripts. We just entered a new um, account and selected uh, the project and uh, the group where the account should be um, created in. And we want to have the same thing in Octane, of course, because yes. it is it is a, a great advantage for us to to add users like that. Mm -hmm. So that is one one of the of the well of the scripts we want to have, but also other scripts. I we ha I told you we have a, a script that is, or we have some scripts, but one script um, is really. Um, uh, doing a lot of SQL um, queries and writing in Excel. And I'm convinced that um, I will be able to, to migrate this script or the creation of this report to, to some, well, to, to the new way of working, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> exactly, so, using the new uh, protocols and so on. Yeah. Yes, and we will probably um, use the um, webhooks to to write data um, when they um, when they have been created directly to to an Excel or to another or to a small database on the web server, like things like that. Yes, we have to change our mindset. We, we, we. It's, it's clear. We, we have to change ourselves. Yes. So, Mark, thanks a lot for uh, this, uh, for your time. First of all, for your contribution to the academy. Um, I know that many people would like to have more information. So, I will definitely invite you again in uh, three months or four months uh, time frame to see what are additional inputs you can provide to the community, as well as if uh, people are interested to connect with you, how can do they do this? If they want to talk to you about migration and um, learn maybe from your experience, how can they contact you? Is there a way to maybe from LinkedIn to get in touch with you? Yes, I'm, in link, I'm a LinkedIn member. And uh, of course, if somebody um, needs some help, um, I can I I like to to help other people of course um well if it is a really a huge amount of work I well we should discuss how no, no, definitely I'm... definitely but, you know just uh, having your opinion on migration I think this is a very important no uh, write to me on on LinkedIn that is the best way or directly here in the comments on the academy. You can also comment here and um, we will make sure that you are connected with Mark. Yes. So again, Mark, really thank you for this uh, great uh, feedback, uh, your experience, and I'm really looking forward where you are in next four to five months and will be happy to re-host you 
You have been the first one always uh, when we look back to the Swiss testing community, Embrace. You have been contributing and also to the Octane user sessions. You have been the first uh, here for as well. So thanks a lot and um, I wish you a great weekend. Thank you very much. Thank Goodbye. you, Mark. Bye bye. So guys, this was the very first uh, session. Again, thank you, Mark Anlicker, for being part and sharing your experience currently in your uh, migration uh, process, in between of the migration process. And um, I think it was very interesting for you. Uh, we will continue to invite additional Octane users and share their experience, how they have been um, transforming from other tools like QC to Octane and what is the overall feedback what you need to consider. So this is a new format we have introduced and hopefully um, if you are interested as a user, please contact us directly um, right below in the comments or contact me if uh, you want directly and we will set up a similar session with you. So for now, thanks a lot. Um, in Switzerland, the sun is shining here in uh, Zurich. So I will enjoy now the weekend and all the best uh, to you guys. Stay safe.